Happy Monday to you. Hope you're having a great day. Uh, since we're outside today, you may have to put up with a few extra sounds. Uh, you may hear one of the neighbor farmers. You may hear some vehicles driving by. Probably hear some birds, and you might even hear the gun range. But I don't really mind the gun range. You know, it kind of makes me feel like I'm in the middle of a bonanza show or something, living out on the Ponderosa with the Cartwrights. It's kind of fun out here. But anyway, I wanted to share a couple of thoughts with you um, on this Monday devotional. A couple of things that came just from our Bible reading uh, for today, both one verse from the Old Testament and one verse from the New. And then just some things that I've been uh, thinking about and wrestling about and I've already talked about a couple of times in other devotionals, but just wanted to continue those thoughts and encourage you today, maybe challenge you. What I was reading in Judges chapter 6 is a story about Gideon being called by God and, a God, and Gideon doesn't think of himself very highly and of course there's a car going by again. Um, God comes to Gideon and says, uh, greetings, you know, mighty man of valor and Gideon's like, who, you're talking, you're talking to me? And he goes through this whole thing where God calls him and tells him what he's going to use him for and Gideon is unsure of himself from the very beginning one of the things that God says to him is one of those kinds of statements that we just see over and over and over again in the Bible and in Judges chapter 6 verse 23 the Lord said to him peace be to you do not fear you shall not die what a great statement. Now there's a whole lot more that happens there in Judges chapter 6. You can read that for yourself and maybe some of you have already. But listen to that. The Lord, Yahweh, said to Gideon, Peace be to you. Do not fear. You shall not die. Reminds me of the way that Jesus often greeted people when they were so surprised to, to see him. Peace be to you. Even when he came back after his resurrection and he met the disciples and they were you know, in their time of despair and he said, Peace be with you. We're going to see another one of those verses in the New Testament as well today in our reading in Mark chapter 13. Now this is a lot of stuff about the signs of the, the end of the age, uh, which is actually pretty relevant stuff for what we're going through right now. I'd encourage you to read that in Mark chapter 13. But one verse stood out to me from this reading as well. Mark 13 verse 11. Uh, talking about when Jesus was warning his followers that they're going to be arrested and brought before the authorities because of their belief in him. And he says this in verse 11, When they bring you to trial and deliver you over, do not be anxious beforehand what you are to say, but say whatever is given you in that hour, for it is not you who speak, but the Holy Spirit. I'm going to read that again just because it's so profound. Jesus telling them when they were arrested, he says, When they bring you to trial and deliver you over, do not be anxious. Hey, there's that thought again. Do not be anxious beforehand what you are to say, but say whatever is given you in that hour, for it is not you who speak, but the Holy Spirit. Of course, that reference to the Holy Spirit is a reminder of Sunday's sermon and how dependent we need to be on the Holy Spirit uh, to understand the, the things of God, the thoughts of God. But here it is again, do not be anxious. Just as the Lord said to Gideon, peace be with you, do not fear. And here Jesus says to his followers, do not be anxious. Do not be anxious. I've been thinking again about this strange time that we're in and how am I using it? And how are you using it? Uh, we know that you know we're all anxious for life to get back to normal whatever normal might be for you it might not be the same as it is for me but we're all you know wanting things to get back to normal but i'm not so sure normal was always good maybe there are some things in our lives that shouldn't get back to normal you know this has obviously changed so many things many of you this might not have changed much at all you're still going to work every day i know the farmers are still farming and I know parents are still parenting, but for some of you, this has really changed things a lot, especially speaking of parents. Uh, those of you who's, who have kids at home and they're not at school now for the rest of the year, and this started sometime in March, and you're going to be going all the way through the summer with the kids at home. And for me, this is a major change with this time of year. I'd usually be running back and forth to one son's baseball games and the college, and then coaching out at Central Lynn and having home games and practices, and then, of course, running all over Timbuktu when you're a 2A school in Oregon, going all over the place. 
so now things have changed for me in the fact that even though I'm still going to, to the office on a regular basis, I'm thankful for that, um, the way I do ministry for the moment has changed. A lot more phone calls and texts and, and video chats and things like that instead of face-to-face -face meetings. But what is really different for me is every night of the week, pretty much, I'm home. And my kids are all home. I'm having extra time with my family. I'm having more time, more free time to do what we might want to do as a family or what I might want to do uh, as a person in the evenings and on the weekends. You know, things are obviously very different for me on Sundays right now than they normally are. I started asking myself this question, and I think I may have mentioned it in one of my other devotionals. Am I using this opportunity that we have right now to the, to the maximum? Am I taking advantage of this extra time that I have? And I'm asking you, are you taking advantage of this extra time that you've been given? If you have extra time right now that maybe you didn't have before. And there are three things that came to me, three F's and three W's, as I was just thinking about this a few minutes ago. And it's really just three points, but... Um, I was wondering, have I frittered away this time when it all comes to an end and we're able to go back to life as normal? Will I have frittered away this time? In other words, will I have wasted it? Instead of maximizing this time and using it for, for productive things or for spiritual growth or for extra uh, um, building relationships with people in my home, ha will I have, at the end of the day, will I have just frittered it away? Will I have wasted it? Or... For some of us, we might be anxious about things. So the question is, have I fretted it away? Maybe I didn't fritter it away, but have I fretted this time away? In other words, worried. Have I, are you worried about the economy? Are you concerned about your personal finances? Uh, are you stressing about your health or about the health of people that you care about? Are you wondering, when are we ever going to get back to normal? And is it going to get back to normal at all? Are you, are you fretting this time away? And worrying. Or the third option is, am I faithfully using this time? Am I faithfully using this time that God has given me? In other words, waiting on the Lord. So again, I'll give those to you if you want. Uh, you can think about them on your own time, but have I, frittered, have I frittered the time away? Have I fretted the time? Or have I faithfully used my time? Or in other words, have I wasted the time? Have I worried this whole time? Or have I waited on the Lord? I guess I've just wanting to be, I've wanted to think about for myself, and I guess I want to think about for all of you who I care about so much. Um, are we maximizing this time so that when it is all said and done, and these restrictions are lifted, and we're able to go back to meeting together in person and all these things, will we be better at the end of this time? Or will we just be the same? Are you using this time to the max? And that doesn't mean you can't ever just, you know, relax a little bit and have fun. Maybe what you need to do is relax. Maybe that what the Lord wants you to do in terms of waiting on Him is to just learn to be still and know that He is God. I don't know what it is that He wants you to do in order to be faithfully using this time. But, you know, He tells us in His Word uh, to make the most of the time because the days are evil. But again, I just want to go back to the main thoughts that, that those two verses reminded me of. Do not fear... So don't, don't fret, and, and do not be worried, do not be anxious. So don't fritter your time away, don't fret the time away. Let's, let's faithfully use this time that we have, and let's be better people spiritually at the end of this quarantine time than we were at the beginning of it. God bless you, my friends. I hope you have a great rest of your day. I hope you maximize this day. Use it for your spiritual growth. Use it for your service to the Lord. Use it to be a blessing to others in some way. And whatever you do, do it for the glory of God. Uh, God bless you, my friends. Hope you have a great day.